Hey, good morning, and welcome to our exercise training session today. Um, the focus is full body strengthening and making sure that we help prevent sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is age-related muscle loss. It's a concern for all of us, and we have particular strategies to help prevent that. Um, we're just going to start by standing really tall, <clears throat> the toes spread apart, press down into the floor. Feel like someone's pulling you up from the top of your head, elongating the spine such that that pulls the chin slightly down. So the chin down is not like this, head forward. It's more the chin comes back horizontally and then slightly angle the skull down. And you should feel your abdominal muscles engage in that position. Now bring one hand on the abdomen at the lower ribs, the other hand at the base of the chin. And holding that position with your body, not moving your head, with the eyes look up and down slowly. And then we'll take a deep diaphragmatic breath into the waist, feeling like someone is, you're expanding your waist to the sides. And as you exhale, someone is squeezing their hands into your waist. You're squeezing in the sides, but do not allow the chin to go forward. And shoulders are down. Excellent. And now switch the hand position. So the head is such that and the chin is horizontally back, slightly down. Your abs are engaged. Your toes are engaged. And with the eyes looking up and down, not lifting the shoulders. Keep the eyes looking down and the breath into the waist. Your belly will definitely expand. And as you exhale, squeeze the waist in, squeeze your abdomen in, keeping the shoulders relaxed, teaching yourself to breathe with the diaphragm. Wonderful. Okay, relax. The purpose of that position is it releases the subocipital muscles, particularly when you move the eyes. The subocipital muscles attach your skull to your body, to your torso. Now we're going to do a few areas of trigger point or myofascial release. So if you could get a ball, a, like a tennis ball is fine, with some kind of massage ball, lacrosse balls. And we're going to work on the muscles on the chest. So just across the chest, from the center, from the sternum, out toward the underarm, the chest muscles here attach um, along the, from your chest up into your arm, the humerus bone. And quite often, people feel more tension down right by the underarm. So in our training, we are always paying attention to basic lifestyle factors, particularly all of us at this point in our culture spend a lot of time sitting at computers, holding on to books, looking at screens, cell phones, and that those angles, they cause the shoulders to roll in toward each other and the head to go forward. And in that position, the chest muscles become short and tight, and then you can't actually get your head back or you can't actually open up the shoulders because of this pull from the front. Ideally, you feel, you know, you feel a bit of tension, but really not much. If you feel it quite intensely, it's something you could do regularly. Okay, now we're going to work on the bottoms of the feet. Same idea, the plantar fascia. This is quite popular when people have, you know, arches are sore. If you massage them out regularly, it does definitely help them. However, just massaging is not the answer that we need to build up strength so that we can keep walking, going up and down the stairs, playing football, whatever you love to do. The other foot, and as you do this frequently, you'll notice it just really always feels quite good. Often in the beginning, it can be quite painful. So just be kind to yourself, be gentle. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to go through um, preparation exercises. These are corrective exercises that help rebuild from the imbalances that I described. 
So I'm going to move the camera. Oh, before I do that though, the things that you'll need, we're going to do this on the floor or if you can't lie down on the floor, you're welcome to do it lying down in bed. Ideally, you have a broomstick. If you don't have one, if you have a weighted bar, a light weighted bar, you can use that. Um, if you don't have that, I suggest today, you just go through the exercises without it. And you'll also need something like a small weight, like a two pound um, dumbbell or a Pilates ball that's maybe two or four pounds. I just use the beeswax candle as the right size. <clears throat> and we're just going to do a few different exercises on the floor, as I said, to counterbalance the forward head posture and from hours of sitting at computers. Not to mention that many of us have had surgeries and other significant injuries that have created imbalances in our structure. Okay, here we go. So now down to the floor. And we're first going to start with a small muscle called the tensor fascia lata. This one, you have to lie face down. And the ball gets placed on, we'll start on the right side. So the outside edge of the right hip and there's a gap between your leg and the pelvic bone. You can feel there's this kind of soft part. And on the outside is called the TFL, tensor fascia lata. And that's a small muscle connective tissue that attaches your leg up here to the outside of the hip. It's an external rotator of your leg. And this muscle, why it's so important, attaches to the IT band, the iliotibial band. Many people suffer with this iliotibial band syndrome, the various factors, valgus knees, knees going in, pain in the round the knees, pain in the hips, lower back discomfort, other areas. Okay, the other side. <clears throat> so in front of the left hip at the outer side, in that kind of soft dish part, you can feel the pelvic bone. The position of the head is best to be turned away from the working side. And if it doesn't feel too bad, that's really good. Uh, so often people will be really tight on one side, really loose on the other, which often will definitely shift the pelvis and strain your back. Okay, that was great. So now we'll turn onto our backs and we're finished with the massage ball for today. On other days, we use it more extensively, working more thoroughly on the neck. However, today we're going to right away begin on aligning the pelvis. And for this, you need a broomstick. And if, again, if you don't have one, you can just set the legs up. You can use a strap or something. The right leg is closer to you, left leg further away on the other side of the bar. The right leg should be set so the knee is directly over the hip. The left leg will be further away, slight, slightly more acute angle. And you have even pressure with your arms and the arms are straight, the chin pulled down, and you press the legs into the bar. So your right leg you're pushing away, your left leg you're pushing, pulling toward you. And recover, and we'll switch that leg position. So left leg is closer to your chest, right leg is further away. The arms are straight, shoulders are back, chin is pulled down. Be sure you do not allow your back to arch. So you must brace the abdominal muscles and press with the left leg, pull in with the right leg equally. You shouldn't really feel pain here. Usually when people first start, the connective tissues in the legs then reverse the position again. If you have adhesions and debris in your tissues, it can feel painful at first, but after you do it a few times, it usually clears the lines quite well. Keep yourself centered. Now your lower back and the back of the hips should be centered on the floor. Try to use both legs, not just the strong leg. And reverse the leg position again. 
The legs should be ideally a 90 degree angle at the knee. Be sure the right leg here, don't let it go out toward the right side. The knee and the hip should be in line. Good, that's perfect position now. And reverse the leg position again. Now keep the chin down, brace your abdominal muscles, brace your stomach muscles. Your lower back should not arch when you do this, but also you don't jam your lower back to the floor, rather just a slight arch in the lower back. You will need abdominal control to do that. And reverse the legs again, last time. The arms are straight, shoulders are back. In, in every exercise we do, we try to get as much benefit as possible. So we use our whole body and align our body and work all our muscles in different angles. So we're capable for whatever you love to do, gardening and tennis. Recover, that was excellent. Now please put the bar down and just relax for a moment. Here we're just going to take a moment and work on the chest again. Take the arms out, palms facing up. Okay, now again, depending on you, if your shoulders are really rotated in, you won't be able to get the arms up very high. So just bring the arms whatever angle you can with the palms up. The ideal position is the palms in line with your forehead. The chin is pulled down for everybody. And just relax your body, relax your legs. Don't use your thighs. Don't use your glutes. Your abs, yes, you do use abs. Reach from the fingertips on that angle. And again, you're extending from your chest down your arms to make sure when we're sitting at the computer, shoulders rolled in, the nerves get pinched down our arms, the blood flow is restricted. So here we're clearing those lines of the nerves and the blood flow. Okay, relax, that was really great. Next thing we're working on is activating the gluteal muscles. That's the muscle, the buttock muscles, but more gluteus medius, that's the one on the outside of the hips. So you just may feel like you're squeezing your, your hips together from the outsides on the sides. So here you'll need a ball or the small weight, and I have my beeswax candle, I love it, in between the knees. The arms are by the sides, the feet, really important here, the feet, toes are pointing forward, big toes on the floor, arches up. Don't let your toes angle out. Keep the chin down, shoulders are relaxed, right hand at the lower ribs, the left arm pressed down into the floor, engage your abdominal muscles, but don't press your lower back to the floor. Just brace your abs, squeeze the glutes from the sides, and then squeeze the knees. And make sure you're using the glute muscles, the muscles on the outsides of the hips, not just using the inside of the thighs. Breathe into the waist, Then relax that tension. We'll switch the arms, left hand at the lower ribs, right arm is by the side. So elongate the neck. Ideally, your head is on the floor. If you can't do that, do use a small pillow. Shoulders are relaxed back towards the floor, but not jamming the shoulder blades, not at all. Shoulders relaxed. Okay, right arm press, glutes, brace your abs, squeeze the knees, Feel even tension outsides of hips, insides of knees. All four points equal. And breathe. Not into the chest, breathe into your waist, breathe into your belly without lifting the shoulders. Recover, relax for a moment. This activation of your hip muscles will help to hold your knees in place. This time, both arms by the sides. If you can do it, palms face down. Double chin, that means pull the chin down toward the throat. Shoulders relax back. 
Press the hands into the floor. Brace your abdominals. Squeeze your glutes together from the sides. Squeeze the knees into the ball. Breathe. Not lifting the chest, breathe into your waist. Don't use your shoulders, shoulders are relaxed, neck is relaxed. And re relax now. We'll take the ball out of the legs and just take the legs out again. Okay, now if you could please take, let's see, what do we have? Nothing, just you. So if you have a big stability ball, you know, one of those very big balls, you can use one of those. Um, if not, then this is what I do. You just, like, imagine you're hugging the big stability ball with your arms, first arms. And then you'd like to imagine as well, the legs are up. So you're bracing that stability ball with your arms and legs. Your chest should be open and chin down. This, okay, here you should not be straining with your neck. Just keep the chin down. And now we're rocking to the sides. So if you could imagine that you're a cradle. So a cradle is one solid unit. And when it rocks to the side, it doesn't fall apart. It stays together as one solid unit. So what you need to do here is really focus on abdominal muscles. This is rotational core. Pull your stomach in. When you get to the end range, don't push off with your arms, just pull your stomach in, use your abs, and you'll just go right over to the other side. This is excellent for sports like tennis and golf, rotational sports, and even just walking around your home, cleaning, gardening, getting out of your car, carrying your heavy bags, and recover, relax the arms and legs for a moment. Okay, the second set we're going to work on, it's called the vestibular system for balance. It, the fluid in the ears and the arms are up again, the legs are up. So to stabilize the vestibular system, we need the eyes and body to work and the head, actually the eyes and head to work independently. So here we're going to turn the eyes to the side and then take your body toward your eyes. Don't move your head, but turn your eyes the other way and take your body over to your eyes. Stop and take your eyes the other way and let your body follow. Make sure you're not turning your head, only the eyes and then your body, your head stays connected to your body without rotating. And for sure do use your abs. Of course, ideally, you don't push off when you get to the end. Nice. Okay, and just relax again. Legs are down, arms out as we did earlier, palms up, reaching from the fingertips. Wow. Now, for me, when we do it this time, it feels a lot better, actually. Like your chest is more open, you're getting better lengthening of the arms. Sometimes our biceps get really tight from all the computer work and holding on to steering wheels and books and things. Okay, that was great. So now we're going to stand up. Now the way I like to do it, if you'd like to, you can join me. Turn over onto the side, whichever side, and all the way over right onto both elbows. Then you bring one knee forward. Then come up on the elbows and pull the other knee forward. Okay, and then come up into crawl position, hands and knees. Curl the toes under, brace your stomach muscles, then lift the hips up, walk the feet forward, walk the hands back, and then take your time, stand up. You might be a little dizzy from the change of blood pressure and all that good oxygen we're getting into our brains. Now we're just going to take a moment and get those things off the floor. Particularly, you know, you don't want that ball under your feet. <clears throat> now, 
Now, of the factors that we were just done working on, we'd like to know apply those in the standing position because that's our lives are walking and we want to keep walking. I would say for all of us, that should be a main goal of our training. Walking, sit down, stand up, get up and down off the floor. You can do those things, you have a good life. Now we're going to um, incorporate something for the feet and arches a few times during the class. So I'm going to demonstrate this now. These are just markers and the placement. So we have three arches in our feet. Uh, we're going to work on two of them today in diff at different points, but I'm just going to demonstrate here one time. Okay, so one arch we're all familiar with, right? That's this arch right here. So you, the tip of the pen goes like that. The lateral arch is this arch out here. We also have an arch on the outside of the foot. So sometimes we're going to put the pen here. I personally um, like to use acorns. They work really well. Um, they do, they're quite painful, but they feel great. Your feet feel amazing afterwards. So here's my acorn, and I would put it like that in this arch. And later on, I'll put it out on the outer arch like that. Okay, so first you'll need your pens or acorns as you like, and also a stretchy band for around the legs. And if it's too painful for the pens under your foot, okay, you can skip it, but it is something you should work on if your feet are that sensitive. The purpose is to prevent your arches from falling. I mean, that's commonly um, well expressed that when you get older, your arches fall. They don't have to, they should not, but you do have to work on it. Okay, so you have this band. If you have one, if you don't forget it, around the knees or just above the knees, and you put the acorns on the inside arch or their pens, whatever you have. And we just leave them there. Feels really good. It makes your arches engage. And bring the arms up like this. Imagine you have a basketball between the elbows. You're squeezing the basketball with your elbows. Double chin position. Slight hip hinge back. So you just push the hips back a bit and hold. This is a hip hinge hold. And... If you squeeze the basketball with your elbows, that you're strengthening your shoulder external rotators. As you're standing like this, you're strengthening your hip external rotators so your knees don't go in and your shoulders won't go in and the feet part, your arches are lifted. Rest? So that's why we do it. Okay, so next time, we're doing this three times, exactly the same. If you'd like to, you can incorporate the neck work here. So you set the arms, hip hinge back, double chin, and keep the chin in that position and turn the head side to side without the chin going forward. It's not a stretch for your neck. Rather, it's an exercise to help strengthen your neck in rotation. Just straighten the legs a little bit. Okay, one more time. Ready? Arms, hip hinge back, double chin. Now this time you just slightly tilt the skull side to side, not bending your neck. Rather strengthening. Okay, and just straighten the legs a little, keep the knees out. Bring the feet together. Okay, and we we'll take the bands off. Always really carefully. <clears throat> okay, and now one thing I always like to pay attention to is the Achilles tendon. Another thing common for many of us is we walk flat footed. So you need to step and bend your ankle. Why do people shuffle? When they get older, because they don't bend their feet, they can't use their arches and ankles. So we're not going to be the shuffler group. We're going to be the jumping group. Just bend the ankle, bend the toes, feels really good. Okay, now the weight lifting component here for the legs and building up your bone density, holding on to your weights. <clears throat> the particular protocol to prevent sarcopenia is 25 to 30 repetitions with a light weight, three to four sets. 
We are going to be doing three sets, 30 reps of a squat. If you can't do that, then you just do a little bit of an action. So you will be holding on like goblet grip. I'll describe that. But the action is hip hinge back and sit down. You don't have to go very low, just a little bit. If you can go lower, that's fine. But you don't want the lower back to flex. So how far? Okay, let's all try this together. So bring your arms up, kind of like you did with the basketball. Feet are just slightly wider than the hips, toes a bit out. Hip hinge back. Then sit down so you're sitting back in between the heels. And if you notice your lower back starts to like tuck under, if your pelvis tucks under, that's too low. You only go where your lower back doesn't shift around. That's how low you know, okay? If you need more specific care, let me know. We'll deal with that later. Okay, now for the training, we're doing 30 reps. Um, I suggest if you get tired, you stop, put your weight down and then do a few more if you can. But we're doing three sets, 30 reps at my pace. The grip is called goblet grip, so you have a dumbbell or a kettlebell, and your heels of your hands are under it. <clears throat> Everybody ready? The toes are gripping, your arches are up, glutes are engaged, brace your abs, double chin, hip hinge back, sit down, press the feet to the floor, and stand up. We all know how to do that. We do it many times throughout the day. Just make sure you brace your abdominals, don't flex your spine. Okay, now put the weight down. This is great. It's in a few minutes, right? How you can get good cardio training. Recover. So like I said, this protocol builds up your muscle tone, similar to lifting heavy weights. But you don't need to lift heavy weights, but you do need to do enough reps with a light weight to build up your strength. Okay, second set. Now this time, we're going to focus on the breathing glutes and ass, so core and breathing. So how it goes is hip hinge, sit down, engage your glutes, brace your abs, exhale, push from the floor. Everybody ready? Set the arms, double chin, brace your abs, hip hinge back, engage your glutes, brace your abs, exhale, lift. Good. At the bottom, glutes, abs, exhale, go.
Good, and recover. That was fantastic. Wait down. Okay, so when, once people get tired, this is what happens. People start leaning forward too much because you try to like skip the legs and then use instead the lower back. So what I mean is that once people get tired, it looks more like this. You can see here pretty well. So instead of doing the squat like this, like sit down, stand up idea, rather people go like this, like just bending the back. So it's not back bending. If your legs are tired, just don't go as low. This is the last set down. Okay, now focus here, wait, hold on. The focus here, we want to take care of our spine. Lips together, teeth apart, tongue at the roof of your mouth. Hold that, chin tucked in, don't let the chin bob up and down. This is the last set of the squat. And rest. Good. And weight down. So next time you feel like you need to do something for your cardio conditioning and you don't have much time and you don't want to go outside, you can just do something like this in 10 minutes. You had really good interval training. Make your heart strong. Keep the flow of your blood and the lymphatic system, and just walk now, recovery. So that was great. So legs are feeling a lot stronger. You're standing up a lot straighter. Now we're going to work on the shoulders. Okay, the upper body strength. Our arms, you know, we, at least we walk around and we go up and down stairs. Our upper bodies comparatively don't do very much. So for our strength training, um, we're going to do bicep curls today for the, our upper body strength. And the elbows are really like pulled into the sides like this. Um, don't let your elbows flare out. We want your chest open. So if you just have your palms like this, palms forward, elbows are by the sides. Keep the palms facing forward and bend the elbows. So in that position, you are strengthening your biceps for sure. And you're also strengthening um, the muscles that support your shoulder, your rotator cuff, in external rotation. So that's why we do this particular exercise today is to help externally rotate our shoulders because on the computers and cell phones, they go in and we don't like that, right? All right, so what do you need? A bar? You can use your broomstick if you want to. I use a, just a weighted bar. 10 pounds is fine probably for most people, 20, 30 if you're stronger. Um, if you if you don't have like a weighted bar for now, just use a broomstick. Then afterwards you'll do a dumbbell. But right now everybody some kind of bar if you have. The feet are just hip width apart, so the action is just keep the elbows by the sides and then bend the elbows. Don't move the shoulders around. Everybody ready? We're doing sets of fifteen, five sets. This is set number one. You're going to think, oh, it's so easy at first. You'll get tired in a little while. Everybody ready? Double chin, 
Toes are pressed down, elbows by the sides. So just press the elbows into the sides and curl. Don't rush. Make sure you get full arm extension. Don't hyperextend the elbows, but they should straighten. That's better. Recover. Okay, we'll put the bar down. That was fantastic. Okay, this time we're going to focus really on the form. So the toes are pressed down, arches up, knees are not locked, knees are a little bit soft. Your glutes are definitely engaged. Your abs are definitely engaged and the head. Now this is where we fall into trouble. Often the head goes like that, straight forward. So the chin is as we did before, Chin is back and slightly down to lift your chest the entire time through the set. Okay, this is set number two. Everybody ready? I'm counting 15 at my pace. Elbows are set, toes, glutes, double chin, abs, lift. Recover. <clears throat> so obviously this will strengthen the wrist flexors, computers and cell phones, the wrist bend back like that. And so the muscles get overstretched around the wrist. So we were strengthening them, strengthening the grip. Um, now it's the first step number three, let's just rest for a minute. If you could face the wall, forehead and toes touch the wall, forehead and toes are touching the wall, arms out ideally, Palms face the wall. Ideally at shoulder level or lower, whatever you like. And just breathe for a moment. Okay, now for set three and four, you know, if, you, if you don't have a weighted bar and you want to use a dumbbell, would you just one arm dumbbell? Um, and you'll count for yourself. Do eight with one arm, eight with the other arm, starting with left arm. So it would look like this. Left arm has dumbbell, the right hand like this, and you just do one arm curl with one dumbbell, eight, and then the other side, eight. The, the bar group, we're doing a set of 15. Everybody ready? Elbows by the sides, you're standing really tall. Toes, make sure you use your abs. Keep the chin back and just slightly down. Exhale as you lift. Exhale, pull your stomach in as you lift.
and everyone rest the dumbbell people should finish the, the two sets of eight. The dumbbell group again, you'll go left arm eight, then right arm eight. This is set number four. Of all of us, the focus this time, as we did earlier, will be the spine, lips together, teeth apart, the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth behind your two big front teeth, and deliberately press up with your tongue. That will stabilize your skull and help stabilize your spine. That will really help you to get more core training out of this exercise. Okay, everyone ready, set four. Elbows by the sides, you double chin, set the mouth, press the tongue. Okay, glutes, exhale, pull your stomach in, lift. and rest and bar down. That was fantastic. So now we're just doing one more set of this. So everybody should please go back to using some kind of a bar. And we're going to like help activate our feet this time. So these are called balance buttons. They're little bubbly things. Um, it just puts pressure into the lateral arch, the outside of your foot, the one I showed earlier. Most of you don't have that. So you can use the acorns or the pens like we did earlier. So we're doing the curl again, exactly the same thing like this, but we're going to activate our arches, but this time the lateral arch. So the pens this time, the tips go on the outside of your, the edge of your foot. Outside of, can you see that? It's on the, this is the lateral arch. This is really fascinating. It's always surprising to people, but as soon as you put the pens there, notice how your big toes press down, your arches come up. Okay, so that's your lateral arch, your outside arch. So that's where we're putting the pens this time. Acorns are a bit too high, so I wouldn't use acorns for this one. Okay, so we're going to set up our feet, feet hip width apart, okay, getting ready for the next set. Then you put those pens in place. So just like above the heel, not by the toes at all, it's more by the heel here. You should see a little bit of a lift on that part of your foot. And then back to the bar. Okay, here we go. Last set. Notice how much your arches are working. Okay, we'll put the bar down. And take those pens away. And when you're walking, you'll immediately feel how your feet are engaging a lot more. Your arches are higher. And when you were doing the set, doesn't that feel better? Like it's much stronger. What I notice is really your abs engage really strongly and you stand more upright when your arches are stimulated. So now we're putting the bar away. We're finished with that series. 
And here, I mean, you definitely feel that again, you're taller, you have some upper body strength. So that's so good. Okay, now another part of walking is you have to stand on one foot. And let's just stand on one foot. Are you falling over? Stand on the other foot. And we just, we just work on strengthening your arches, so this should be the best time. In any case, when you're walking, a lot of people are very unstable, and that's another reason people shuffle, because if you're going to fall over, you just put your foot down, right? And you kind of walk like this, because you're always falling over. So here we want to not fall over and teach ourselves how to be really strong. We could even run if we wanted to. Don't have to, but you could. So the action is you'll have a band. It could be at this, like, you know, just that shoulder height or so, at least waist height or, or higher is better, but the, the it gets pulled back like this with your arm. If you don't have a place to attach a band, then instead you can hold on to a chair. That, that totally works fine. What we're doing though is called single leg stance, so you stand on one leg. And apply force similar to when you're walking. So when you walk, you, one arm goes forward and then you step and then they go back. So it's the opposite of arm and leg. So that's what we're working on. We'll be holding on like this to the band or you hold on to the chair. And it looks like this, one leg is up and you just do a bit of a hip hinge. You might straighten the arm, you might not. It depends on how tight your band is, but the band should be very tight. Like not loose, not a loose TheraBand. You want something that has a lot of tension. You want your whole body to work here and creating tension from hands to feet. I will see if this angle will work. Give this a try. Okay, so here I got the band. We're starting with right hand holding on. No, we'll start left hand, left hand. This is usually the weaker side for most people. Left hand is holding on. The elbows pulled by the side, you have a lot of tension. Right hand on the lower ribs. Left foot is off the floor. Hip hinge, straighten the left arm. Engage your right glutes, pull the left shoulder blade. Okay, rest, take the pressure off. And you know, this kind of exercise also, it's great for your concentration, right? For your brain, because you really have to focus. Left hand, lower ribs, right hand has the band or you're holding onto the chair. Right foot is off the floor. Okay, use your left glutes, everybody. Left glutes, okay. Right leg goes back, straighten the right arm, use your left glutes, stand up and pull. Recover. Okay, that was really good, really good. So we're doing two more sets like that, two more sets of 15. The second time, we're going to again focus on the breathing part. So it goes like this. It's inhale, down, engage the glutes, exhale, pull your stomach in, stand up. That lifts your pelvic floor and engages your core. I'll say it as we start. Left hand is holding on, elbow by the side, or you hold onto the chair, right hand, lower ribs. To right foot, toes are pointing forward, don't let them angle out. Okay, good. Double chin, ready? Left foot off the floor. 
hip hinge, left arm straight in, engage your glutes, pull your stomach in, exhale, stand up. recover. I just would like to point something out here. You have to be sure that you're doing the right action with the arms and legs. Okay, just stop. What I mean is when you walk, okay, when you walk, the opposite arm and leg go forward like this. You have to be careful that you're not doing this. So now this goes right hand is holding on. Now that applies to this exercise. Right hand hold on. Elbow pulled back, left hand lower ribs. Okay, now right foot up, get ready. Hip hinge back, straighten the arm, engage your glutes, stand up, pull. That's the sequence. Hip hinge back, straighten the arm, engage the glutes, pull, stand up. And rest. All right, that was really, really good. Next, one more set only. So this time, we're going back to the vestibular system concept. The head position is should be always like this. The chin is pulled in and slightly down. Your head is in line with the spine. And when you hip hinge, your head is still in that same position. Generally, people start tipping the chin up and down. That destabilizes your spine and you know reduces your balance ability. So left hand hold on. Right hand lower ribs. Left elbow by the side. Get your right foot prepared. Toes are forward. Left foot up. Now tuck the chin. Don't start yet. Tuck the chin. Stabilize your neck. Look down with your eyes. Hip hinge. Keep looking at that point, but don't let your chin move away from your throat. recover. Okay, that was really excellent. You should have noticed you're more stable when you can really focus like that. Right hand is holding on. Pull the elbow back. You hold onto your chair if you have a chair. Left foot, toes are forward. Spread them. Press them into the floor. Okay, right foot up. Now, chin is slightly back and slightly down. Look down with your eyes. Keep your eyes on that point. Hip hinge. Straighten the arm, keep your eyes on that point, and keep the chin holding position.
and recover. And that was great. And next we'll just walk around. Okay, we'll do just one more simple thing here to finish off the training for today. As we did earlier, standing at the wall like this with the arms out, palms facing the wall. If you cannot get the arms up in line with the shoulders, that's okay. You can have the arms a bit lower, but they should be palms facing the wall, forehead touching the wall. And when you reach with your fingertips, what you should feel here, the glutes are engaged. Your abs will automatically engage. You're releasing the tension down the arms, getting better flow and breathe. And then relax. Now we'll just walk a bit again. Let's get it earlier. Very slowly take a step, flex your Achilles and just notice how much range you have and it's not that it's loose, but it's because you're stronger. So your body can move more freely. So that's how we stretch and strengthen and build up our muscles and try not to lose our bone density. And thank you for coming today. Um, see you next time. This is our Wednesday classes and enjoy the video or join our classes. Have a great day.